Christine, welcome. For about 50 years, about 50 years, people have been asking me to make a bookshelf tour. Seriously, so saying, why don't you ever make a bookshelf tour video? Christine, you know what would be a good idea if you made a bookshelf tour video? Are you ever going to make a bookshelf tour video? Because we really want to see your books. Guys, I never had a bookshelf. Can't make a bookshelf tour video with a pile of books stacked in your closet. You just can't. It's not cool. I just moved to my new house and I have a bookshelf. I'm so excited. It's so beautiful. It was so exciting. Are you excited? Are you ready to be thrilled with its beauty? I mean, it's not that thrilled. Don't get your hopes up. I mean, it's not that crazy, but I have a bookshelf. So we'll start the tour here on our top shelf. I organize it in order of what I want to be seen in videos is in the middle-ish area where you generally stand, not on top of a chair. We start off with Incarceron by Katherine Fisher, which I bought back in 2010, I think? Never read it completely. I think I got, let's see, I have my bookmark still in. I got 51 pages in. It was one of those books that you think, I think it's a good chance to get used to the world, but I didn't because I had other books that I wanted to read. Gave up. And I know there's two sequels, and I don't know if they were good, if they're any good. Let me know if you've read them. It's pretty. Putting it back now. Next, we have Kim Durting's The Body Finder. I read it in 2010 as well. I enjoyed it, but not that much. It was like an okay read for me, so I didn't continue with the series. I know this is a series as well. Next, we have The Thief Lord by Cornelia Funk. I read this when I was maybe 10. It just, it looks nice, and it's hardcover, so. Figured... It gets to go on the shelf. Next we've got Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith, which came out as a film this year. I read this back in maybe 2010 as well. I got to page 236 out of 330. I got really far. I almost made it before I got bored. It was really slow, but it was really interesting because I love Abraham Lincoln. And I think the Civil War time of American history was just so interesting to learn about. I gave up because I got distracted by another book. Look how cool the back cover is. Abe cut off a vampire's head because that's how you kill vampires in this. It just made so much sense. I like started to believe that maybe he was a freaking vampire hunter and our history, this is how history was. This is why it was the way it is. It's so good. But it's really slow if you don't like history. Next, we have Nightshade by Andrea Kramer, which I read at the end of 2010. It's a really gorgeous book, gorgeous cover. I very much enjoyed it. But when I got the second one on my iPad, I just, there was too many other things going on. I was in London. It didn't hook me immediately. So I never finished it and I never went on with the series. Did you? How good were they? Next I have Wish by Andrea Bullen. And I remember buying this because I thought it was a beautiful cover. And I actually spoke about this in my first book talk ever on my Pullman's 20 channel because that's what I was reading at the time. And it was okay. It was a nice, fluffy, cute read. It wasn't, you know, spectacular. It was about a dress that gives you three wishes. Next, we've got Wings by April Lynn Pike. Miley Cyrus is signed on for this film. You know, it was okay. It was cute. I enjoyed it. I got the second one, and I never read it. So, that died. This is White Cat by Holly Black, the Curse Worker series, the first book, and I really liked it. I mean, I made a book talk about it. It was not very good, so I have privated it at this point in my life. I bought Red Glove. It came out around the same exact time that City of Fallen Angels came out, so yeah, we know it took precedent there. I tried to read Red Glove, and I never got through it, so bummer. Ah, Snowman! Next, we have Lola... Fucking Snowman. Next, we have Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins, which I loved. I loved this book. It is a very, very quick read. It's really cute. Next, we have Matched by Ali Condi. Really like this one. Here we're coming up to my Dan Brown collection. I love Dan Brown's books, as I have said before. Here we have Angels and Demons, The Da Vinci Code, The Lost Symbol, and Digital Fortress. I'm missing Deception Point, which is at the Shore House right now, but eventually it'll go in here. That's a really big one. I'll have to rearrange some things. But row two! Oh, uh, it's gorgeous. This is row two is a good one. We have my Cassandra Clare collection. If you haven't read the Jimmy I series, sign out the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. Read them ASAP, thank you. Here we have the first is City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Class, and City of Fallen Angels. 
and City of Lost Souls. Then we have the Infernal Devices series, which is just as wonderful, if not better. Clockwork Angel and Clockwork Prince. Highly recommend. Highly, high, high, do it, read them. Next we have my Heroes of Olympus collection, which I have yet to read, but I'm so excited to get to. So excited. The Lost Hero, the Son of Neptune, and the Mock of Athena. This owl mug that I got for Katie and have yet to give to her, so now it sits on display until I do. Here on level 3 we have a rather attractive bunch. My Stephanie Meyer collection. We have Twilight. New Moon is freaking missing, you know why? Because when I was reading Eclipse, Olivia thought I was too obsessed with reading. She thought I was still on New Moon. Moon, and she hid my hardcover copy, and then I never got it back. I have the softcover copy down where my repeats are on the bottom. Eclipse, The Short Second Life of Britanna, Breaking Dawn, The Twilight Saga Official Guide, because had to have the official guide. I only ever flipped through the pages once and found it uninteresting. Pre-ordered it in 2008, didn't receive it till maybe 2010, 2011. Thanks, Stephanie. Then we have my Catherine Hardwick's Twilight Director's Notebook. I am into film. I needed to have the director's note. I had to have it. Here in the center, we have Stephanie Meyer's masterpiece, The Host. Next, we have the gorgeous Divergent series by Veronica Roth. Here we come upon the Hunger Games trilogy. It's wild and wonderful. Here we have the Shiver series by Maggie Stevater, 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 Stevater. Shiver, Linger, and Forever. I was not thrilled with this series. I was just wanted to see what happened, so I continued. And the last one's the best one because there's interesting characters. The main two characters are just really dull, man. On shelf 4 here, we have my wand. Oh my god. The Elder Wand. First book we have here is Pandemonium by Lauren Oliver. I think it has a really nice cover and it's a really great series. It's the second book in the Delirium series. I recommend you read it. This series is going places. I love where it's going and I'm so excited for the next book. Unfortunately, I bought Delirium on my iPad so it can't be displayed. Next, we come upon my Mara Dyer series. The first is The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. The second is The Evolution of Mara Dyer and I really like those. Next, we have my Lanny Taylor collection. Lanny Taylor's first book with Daughter Smoke and Bone. Her second book, Days of Blood and Starlight, was just released. I have yet to read it, but it looks nice and it's hard to cover, and I'm excited to start it. Next, we're coming up on my JK Rowling collection. First, we've got The Casual Vacancy. This little baby came out this year in September. I haven't read it yet, so great. I know I will eventually. The first 50 pages didn't exactly grab me, but I know it will pick up and I will like it. Next, this is my Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows British Bloomsbury version. I got it when I was in London. Then we've got Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, The Goblet of Fire, which doesn't ever cover because I lost it when I was 10. Oh. Here in our next row, we start off with Spider-Man the Beanie Ball. Behind him, we have the Maze Runner, which doesn't get displayed because it wasn't good enough. The Hush Hush series, which I started back in 2010. I read Hush Hush. Then I read Crescendo and it was not good and I didn't like it. And then I bought Silence and I have yet to read it. And Finale just came out. I know. I know! Not sure if I'm gonna read it. I'll read Silence, see how I like it, and then we'll see how that progresses. We have The Graceling Blob by Kristen Cashore. I loved Graceling. Next we had Fire, which is kind of a prequel to Graceling, what happened. And then Bitter Blue, which is kind of a sequel, but different, but it's good. It's kind of slow moving, Bitter Blue, and so is Fire. The fastest paced book of this series was Graceling, which was just wonderful. I think anyone will like that. If you're more patient, though, I think you will also enjoy Fire and Bitter Blue. Over here, we've got my Wake trilogy by Lisa McMahon that I read a really long time ago. I mean, that was a good trilogy. I mean, it ended really depressingly for me, so it doesn't sit in my mind as like a oh, great read. Going down even more now, we've got the Poison Study series, which I think is highly underrated by Maria V. Steiner. I just talked about these in my favorite books video and I really think everyone should read them. Poison Study, Magic Study, and Fire Study. The narrator is freaking kick-ass. I love her. Next, Maria V. Snyder did a spin-off series after she was done with the Poison Study series. The first one was Stormglass and I just, it wasn't the same. It was okay but I didn't enjoy it as much. I read it and then I bought the second one as I do. As I do. And then I didn't read it. So great. Waste of money. Next we have The Alchemist, The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Femel, which I bought 
bought one I went to Barnes and Noble a few times ago and I haven't read it yet because I've been reading a million other things. It looks interesting and I want to read it. Have any of you read it? Do you like it? Next we have the Beautiful Creatures series. I bought Beautiful Creatures on my iPad so I don't have the first book. But then we have Beautiful Darkness, Beautiful Chaos, and Beautiful Redemption. Beautiful Redemption is surprisingly smaller than Beautiful Chaos. Here we have my little Thomas Jefferson beanie. We have the Ugly series. Here I have uglies and specials. I bought pretties on my iPad. I liked uglies. I enjoyed the first half of pretties and then I wanted to stab everything. I bought specials and I never read it because I'm still freaking fed up with this series. Next we have Elixir by Hilary Duff. Yes I know Hilary Duff has a book. What? It's, it's pretty decent actually. It's a series. I have the second one but I never finished it. Next, I have Rachel Kane's Glass Houses, which is the first book in her Morganville Vampire series, which I read when I was in London. And I was traveling, and I was like in traveling bookshops, you know, the ones they have the airports, and I couldn't find the second one in any of the shops. So I never ended up reading it. I thought it was okay, this first book. It was good, but it didn't like. Oh, I need to read the next one! It probably grows on you as you read the series, just like Vampire Academy. After that, I have The Nanny Diaries, which I read back in high school, so maybe 2007, 2008. It was really funny, I really enjoyed it, and the movie was such a downer. Next we have The Bro Code by Barney Stinson. We have John Green's Paper Towns, which was phenomenal. And after that, I have The Times Traveler's Wife, which I read in maybe... I read this in high school, in senior year of high school, and it was just so good. It was sad and happy and just very touching and moving and I cried a lot. The movie was just so not as good at all. It just, they took out all the happy parts and just kept all the sad parts and it was just a big blob of depressing. We move on to our final shelf, the very bottom. Starting it off, I have my Twilight, the complete illustrated movie guide and New Moon, the complete illustrated movie guide. I never actually made it to Eclipse because I had kind of past that phase where I needed the illustrated movie guides. Then we've got my Lord of the Rings collection, which I never read. Well, I tried to read it when I was maybe 10 and it was really hard and so I gave up. After that, we have the horrid Evermore Immortal series that I want to set on fire, but I have them. I have the first four. Ah, it's that, it's that kind of torture where you want to see what happens, but then you read and it tortures you. I, I also bought Radiance. The other Alice in Noel novel spin-off with Riley and I never read it. I used it as a paperweight and it's all dirty and just I'm so mad at these series. I just... Next, I have The Enemy by Charlie Higson. I read the first 79 pages or so and I'm really enjoying it. I got distracted by another book but I am going to come back to this because I love zombies. Uh, the Walking Dead is like one of my favorite shows and... When I was little, I loved Shel Silverstein. I had all of his books, but Falling Up is the only one that I seem to have in my collection here. Wildfire by Nelson DeMille, which I tried reading and never got through. It was like in my Dan Brown phase, and he's supposed to be like Dan Brown. He's not. Didn't do it for me. Next, we have Stowaway, which I received as a gift when I was maybe like 12, 11. Never read it. And Son of a Witch, which I love the play Wicked a lot. So I got Son of a Witch and then I never read that either. I think I tried to. Didn't work out too well. This is before I discovered the genre of young adult books. And yeah, after that we've got my Percy Jackson box set. It's it's pretty hot. Underneath that we have my second set of Twilight books. And behind here we can see that I have multiple copies of the City of Bones books. And more instruments books because I need to have hardcover and at first I bought softcover so there they are. Yep! That is my bookshelf. I hope that was fun to see for you. I mean, it was really fun for me to set up. That, that, so I was so elated when I was putting books on a shelf. I'm happy I got to share it with you. I'll talk to you next time. I'm Christine. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at XTeenMay. And yeah, see you next time. Bye! Here we have is. Ah! Oh my god.